Welcome to Public Interface. I'm Mark, and joining me today is Dan Salove, Psychor Practice Lead at Valir. Today we're going to be talking about the fog of code. Dan, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. So I've worked on a number of projects where you're working with a team of developers who are each contributing their own style of code, or even in different legacy projects where you have all this very tightly coupled code. How do I, as a developer, know when I go in there, make changes, that I'm actually being effective and I'm not making things worse? It's a great question. Um, I think one of the biggest single things you can do is get the people working on the project in close proximity. Um, bribe people with donuts, do whatever you need to do so that you know, you're know you about this far apart from the other people you're working with. It just lowers the friction to um, asking questions and um, you know you make a design decision. You know you have that feeling like, is this? I kind of want to do this, but then that's going to happen. I kind of want to do that. You have you if you can have that conversation with another developer and kind of surface the trade-offs. You know you start to get this Borg brain going on on the team. We're like, oh yeah, we do things this way, and you know that just starts to help a lot. So I like to sprinkle a little bit of extreme programming, a little touch of pair programming, a little touch of unit tests. So it's good stuff. You know you don't have to be extreme in your extremism. But I like being extreme in my extremism. You have to sell it up the, uh, up the food chain. So, you know, I want to do a touch of extremism. Okay, we'll watch. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, but what else can I do as a developer to go in and, and try to decouple some of this code? Because I feel like sometimes it's just so hard to test. Well, dependency injection is a really powerful tool. Um, what, th what it allows you to do is to write code... Um, and talk to an interface or talk to an abstraction and basically say, you know, when I'm writing this piece of code, I know I'm going to get this thing, and I know I'm going to have to send that thing, but you don't actually have to wire it to the, the, the larger system. That allows you to do things like, you know, write a unit test. Now, let, let me ask about that, because I feel like testing is such a laborious task. You know, I feel like I'm that guy from Da Vinci Code whipping himself. I'm a penitent man. I'm a penitent man, you know? Often, not always, often there's a payoff. I was working with one person, and he really felt that this resistance was just getting in his way. And about a month or two later, he was on the other side of it because he had to work on some code, didn't have any test coverage, and he felt this fear that I don't know what I'm going to break. And you know, maybe you go in there and you change a couple of lines, and then you're like, I think I know what I'm doing here. I think I've got this. And then you're like, you know, I, I don't really not sure what, what this is going to do now. I can't touch it. I don't want to touch this because it's working now. And at the point your code is in a, I can't touch it because it's working now, it's kind of, it, it's, it's dead. Then you got to bring in the team with the hazmat suits and seal everything off. Exactly. And it's just, you're just going to kind of walk away from it. It's like, I can't really touch that, so I'm going to do this other thing, <laughs> which I won't be able to touch later on. And that's when like you get really, really, really deep into the fog. And there's really another area where I think it's kind of foggy, which is dependency injection. And how many interfaces is too many interfaces? Two books by Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. Uh, first one, clean code, changed my life as a developer. Basically, had this idea, has this idea that you are writing for the next developer. You're writing to make your code expressive. Um, it's not enough to have it work. It has to work in a way that's understandable and changeable. And then, building on that idea of changeability, um, the solid principles is laid out in the book. Um, uh, principles, I always get the P's mixed up. Um, uh, principles, practices, and patterns. I think of agile development. Um, there are five chapters in there about solid. They're actually in the wrong order. He didn't realize they made an acronym at that point. It's solid D. But it's a really, they're, they're such classics that, you know, it, it's really funny when you read them, the original chapters. They're short. They're to the point. They tell you how to do it and how not to overdo it. Um, Buy the book. Teach them to your children. Exactly. This has all been great advice. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for sitting here and talking with me and and help me kind of lift the fog. Sounds good. I really appreciated this. Thanks. So that's our show. Follow us on Twitter at Valir. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And join us next time as we implement another episode of Public Interface. <laughs>